Good afternoon. Hi, Facebook friends. It's Maria at the Tijuana River National Estuary Research Reserve here outside the visitor center. We are live and I am just waiting to see if anyone is joining us for today's lunchtime live. Here it is, 12 o'clock on Tuesday, usual day and time for lunchtime live. And of course, I always like to hear, get some feedback. Hi, Sonia. Yay, nice, to, nice, nice you can join us. Can you hear me okay? Uh, we have some helicopters and there is a little bit of wind um, even here behind the visitor center where I am. So uh, if you can hear me, uh, please let me know how the sound is and maybe you even recognize where I am just outside. Thank you, Sonia. Right outside the back of the visitor center. So the sound looks like it might be good. I'll flip this around, give you a sense of place. <laughs> there we are, the back of the visitor center. Uh, for those of you who have been to the Tijuana Estuary before. So, welcome and uh, back and welcome to those who might be new. Hopefully we have some new friends in our audience today, either live or watching later uh, for today's Lunchtime Live. And again, my name is Maria, Education Specialist here at the Tijuana Estuary in Imperial Beach. And it is a beautiful, sunny day. It was pretty foggy this morning when I got here, um, but that has burned off and it has turned into a beautiful early August Tuesday. Uh, and today, <laughs> today's feature for Lunchtime Live is a plant just in front of me. Hi, Mark. Thanks for joining us. Mark is a regular uh, Lunchtime Live fan. So a few others on here today. We really appreciate our loyal watchers. So let me flip this around and show you. Happy Tuesday, Leon. We love our Lunchtime Live Tuesdays. There it is. The California Fuchsia. California Fuchsia. Right here behind the visitor center. I chose, there's another one right in front. I chose this one. It's a little off trail. Uh, less opportunities for distraction as we are live today. California Fuchsia. This is a, a native uh, plant to the southwest. Uh, states, you know, here in California, the southwest, in the coastal areas and foothills, in a family, the Onagraceae family. And this is our evening primrose or fuchsia family. So those of you may may be familiar with some of those plants, um, primroses, evening primrose, uh, kind of a common plant in gardens. That family is found throughout, very widespread, throughout the world on every continent. Uh, but today's uh, spotlight is on the California fuchsia or the Epilobium canum. Epilobium canum or canum. California fuchsia, sometimes also called the hummingbird trumpet. But I just wanted to give you a, a sense of what, how, how big it is. Uh, this one pretty large, maybe four feet wide or so. And uh, maybe in those taller uh, branches reaching up to you know, three or four feet as well, but typically more like maybe two to three feet high and about three feet wide. A wonderful size plant in your garden, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit later, um, why you might want to grow this. Uh, but this is, a, Cal this is a, na a native, native to California and to the Southwest. So there it is, beautiful. But how many of you have seen this plant before or are familiar with it? By the way, for those of you who are new, feel free to ask questions, um, uh, comments if you have anything related to California fuchsia that you'd like to share on this live stream. Um, uh, we'd love to see those. And uh, if you're chiming in later with questions on the rebroadcast, um, or I guess on the on the recording, please ask and I will get back to you. So let's get the what we like to do is we get the the camera off of the tripod, get close. Oh, look at that! Got a pollinator. 
we've got a pollinator. I well, all right, we'll talk about that as well. Who's who's a fan besides us of the California fuchsia? So let me get the camera off of the tripod. Now I'm going to walk slowly and cautiously. Um, I'm a little bit on the alert. <laughs> About a month ago, I saw my first rattlesnake in 23 years here at the visitor center, and it was in this general area. So now I'm just a little bit cautious, actually a lot cautious, a bit more alert. Uh, all right, so let's get down, we'll get close. We've got the macro lens with us today. For those of you who aren't familiar, we're gonna get some up close and personal. There's so much to look at at the Epilobium canum or the California fuchsia. So again, if you are familiar with this plant, feel free to share or if you aren't asked questions, but we're gonna, we're gonna get close. We'll start with, um, let's take a look at the stems. So as we said, these are very branching, very long stems uh, coming uh, mostly from the bottom and what color? What color are those stems? And hopefully the sunlight is in favor for some good lighting with this. We can see a lot of contrast in color just looking at the stems. So I don't know if you can see that, but those stems are purple. Purplish stems supporting those gray green leaves. Who's ready for the macro. Are you ready for the macro lens? Let's get the macro lens on. Oops, I'm never quite that graceful at this, at the placement, but once it's on, let's see. Let me get down so we get a little more light with us. All right. <laughs> yeah, bring on the macro. The macro is on. I know there's always a delay, so we aren't having an and an instantaneous conversation here but please feel uh, feel free to comment or ask questions and i will wait for and pauses so there we see the purple stems supporting those gray green leaves slender slender leaves Coming out, you can see them. More than one leaf, as then also for those botany folks, see how they're positioned, sort of alternate. Now, are any, are there any observations? Uh, are there any observations about these stems and leaves? Is there anything? that you're noticing. We'll get to the flowers, Alessandra, in just a minute. I just wanted to see if anyone is noticing, and I'll try to be steady here, and get really get in with that macro. Is there an observation? Is there something else that we can see? A characteristic of the California fuchsia or hummingbird trumpet. I'm just going to pause. Does it look a little dusty? And I apologize. The light, I'm kind of looking they're into the light. Maybe there, oh, there. What do you see? Is anyone noticing what I, what I notice? Furry. Yeah, Mark, furry. Hairs. This is a plant that produces a lot of hair. See that? What would be a, a, a benefit of hairs? We've talked a little bit about this before. Anyone want to guess or do they know? What would be the benefit of having hair as a plant? Especially here on the coast. Here on the coast. Again, I'll wait. Natural sunblock, one good reason. Yeah, I do care. Got some shade. 
you know, we're here in the in the southwest. When do we get most of our rainfall? Not this time of year. Yes, Joe, gather mist, right? So the hairs will pull moisture off out of the air and onto the stems and leaves, giving that the plant some of that, giving it some of that summer moisture that it needs. That then, what we will see is hello john all right so hairs not not unusual but we don't always see it but this one really obvious hairs on these now we're seeing something else okay what else that might be a little bit more a bit more unusual this time of year here in san diego southern california with long dry periods what are we seeing it's a summer flowering plant the summer flowering fuchsia okay flowers right lots of them i'm going to pull this off for a minute this plant you can produce something like two to three hundred flowers per plant here we are the early part of august right most of our flowering plants are in our spring not august not august so this is one of the very few maybe the only native flowering this time of year and it will flower continue to flower maybe even into october really really great that gives us that color you know as i look around the native plant gardens you know we don't see a lot of color right now. There's the, the buckwheat, sort of summer flowering, kind of going dormant. But here, just starting to flower. Some of these are not even open yet. Okay, so this is, a, let's put the macro back on. What shape? What's the shape of this flower? Call it like a tubular trumpet shape. And we can see sort of a, a bulge at the base Right, and that trumpet-like shape, beautiful, scarlet red, deep red. Now there are varieties that are maybe a little more orange and when you start getting into cultivars or you know nursery plants, a little more pink. But here we have the red, the red summer flowering fuchsia, California fuchsia and red supports what what is what species of wildlife <laughs> love the color red yeah, let's see what does joe say he noticed that the wild fennel is one of the other plants re really blooming right now bees are swarming them okay yes julie hummingbirds uh, called the hummingbird plant hummingbirds perfect nectar source perfect shape for their long beaks and long tongues pulling nectar out of the base of a trumpet shape and red is that color that attracts them yeah so this is if you want hummingbirds in fact right when I was setting up I felt so bad when I was sitting up there was a hummingbird that uh, came by and then quickly moved away as he as it saw my presence um, it was ready for lunch <laughs> Uh, so, uh, but there's one around the corner, so hopefully it found that one. So if you want some, um, uh, attract some, uh, bees and butterflies and, 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 and birds, <laughs> this is a plant. We saw that butterfly, uh, I think the white line sphinx moth. This is one of the host plants for that, for that species of moth. And then, yes, our, lo our lovely hummingbirds. Okay. Now there was a question. Do the flowers have a scent, a smell? So um, I know the answer, but I'll just verify. <sighs> no, no scent, okay? Uh, same with the leaves, rubbing the leaves, no scent, no scent. Just that bright red that attracts uh, well, the, the pollinators, okay? Now, this plant is extremely hardy, extremely hardy. 
Um, uh, Lorena here says she's got dogs. Her dogs have laid all over her, her fuchsias, and um, they they just bounce right back. Okay, so they do, they're really hardy, um, do well uh, in soil that drains, easy to grow. Um, you know, summer summer na summer flowering without water, without giving it water, just especially if you're in a coastal region. If you give it water, you can, um, you can uh, uh, maybe prolong that flowering season. Let's see what uh, types of moths. A uh, white line sphinx moth. The white line sphinx moth. This plant is, I think, a host to that particular moth. So, put that on there. Um, very dense. Fills your yard nicely will stay really looking good um, with water. Now, when it's time to go dormant in the winter, uh, before it does that, when these flowers are, are pollinated, it will, uh, plant will produce a green pod and then that will turn brown and crack open and then there will be a seed, um, seed that, seeds that emerge and the seeds also have hairs and are wind pollinated. So, um, we aren't there yet with this one. So maybe in, you know, October, November, uh, when the flowering season has come to an end, maybe a month or so later. So, all right, one more macro shot and then we will, if you have any other questions, please, please feel free to ask. Uh, really lovely plant, a contrast of stem to leaf to flower is striking especially in the time of year when things are really going dormant it's just the evergreens giving us that green but most flowers have have gone have gone gone through their cycle of flowering and seeds are starting to form so this is the a nice splash like a uh, last splash of color uh, before the fall and winter California fuchsia, Epilobium canum. And there it is. How old is the plant? So Alessandra is asking how old is the plant that I'm that I'm um, uh, that I'm here. This this particular individual, I believe this individual uh, has been around. I'm not sure if it was planted here before I started 23 years ago, but it's, I feel like this one has been here at least, uh, possibly that long, but if not, at least uh, maybe 10 to 15 years, if not more in this area. So after a while, I start, start to kind of forget when certain areas were planted. This one might've been from a, from a planting that occurred since, but, I think it may be actually be pretty, maybe fairly old. Good question. But these will, uh, perennial plant. So that these are perennial, um, and they do spread, uh, and then you know seeds. They also produce seeds, but they do also spread sort of in a rhizome-like way. So um, one last shot. I'll back up. You can see that. Any other questions? today all right i think oh this is a um a fire resistant plant so i'll turn i'll uh right before i sign off i'll say hi again this is a fire resistant plant it is found on some fire resistant plant lists so another benefit to the california fuchsia is that it um will give you the nectar source uh it's flowering in the, in the summer where most things aren't uh, it's easy to grow, it's hardy, and uh, it's fire resistant. So definitely something you might want to consider if you want natives in your yard, but also something to keep your eye out for when you are in, your, in, these, uh, in the Southwest, in, in, in um, coastal areas and foothills. So thank you so much everyone for joining us. Thank you uh, as always for, for participating weekly or when you can or spreading the word for these lunchtime live events.
So have a great day, everyone. Oh, where can I, good, Julia, where can we find one to buy? Uh, there's a native plant nursery um, called Las Palitas. It's, it's kind of far, um, but that's, that's one. There's all, that's up uh, kind of in North County Inland, uh, Escondido. There's also um, uh, Native West Nursery, Native Plant Nursery here in Imperial Beach. And then, um, so kind of opposite ends of the county. And then there's also uh, the California uh, Native Plant Society does plant sales. We're out of Balboa Park a couple of times a year. So that might be, I'm not sure if, you know, your local nurseries will have them or not. It's good to check. Maybe if it's not, it might be some variety, but um, try, try uh, California Fuchsia Epilobium Canum, C-A-N-U-M. Um, and maybe you can find one at a, at a, at a, at a local nursery, but uh, those two couple native plant nurseries are really wonderful places to go to if you can make the trip. Okay, they're just fun to go and check out anyway. Okay, all right, thank you, great questions, and have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye everyone.